otherwise sold out, but you can see upcoming Wednesdays uh, at funnybus.net. It is a lot of fun. So if you've never joined us for that, you absolutely should. All the details are there. You click on Cleveland, and then you find the Alan Cox Show logo. Funnybus.net. So Monday and Tuesday, I will have those passes for you to win. If you want to go see Third Eye Blind in July at Blossom, get you set up for that. Rise Against is back this fall. Nick Swardson, if you're a fan of his comedy, he has announced that tour called the Toilet Head Tour. He'll do the Goodyear Theater in September. I got a shot for you and a friend or a loved one uh, to go to Hawaii. Trip for two to Hawaii, courtesy of Kona Brewing Company. So I'll qualify you for that trip next week. A five-night trip for two to a four-star resort Oh, and $1,000 in spending cash. Dang. Right? It's a grand prize. Yeah, like two What's the resort? Don't know. Oh. But it's in Hawaii. Um, and a band called Whiskey Myers, if you're into them. Kind of like a Southern Rock thing. They're going to play Youngstown, so you got to check a couple of boxes. Do you really like Whiskey Myers? And do you want to drive to Youngstown? So all of that next week. Guardians. Can't manage the sweep, but that's okay. They lost to the Rangers in Dallas last night, 4 to nothing. They come back home to take on the Twins. That starts tomorrow night at Progressive Field. It'll be a 7-10 first pitch after a uh, sum-of show tomorrow. Dustin left a message on the, um, on the uh, talkback button there on the app. Alan, I'm so sorry about the technical difficulties, man. So I figured I would do the talk back button. But would Mary have a problem with Bill subscribing to Mary's sister's OnlyFans? Now that sounds a little cray cray because once you see Mary's sister naked, now you know what Mary looks like naked, minus a couple of pounds. Just saying, either way, Bill, <laughs> I'm on your side. What does that mean? Minus a couple of pounds. She's a little thicker than I am. Oh, she is? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, well, guy, some guys like that boy. They like the meat on the bones. What's wrong with that? I think it's weird if he's if you subscribe to anyone that you know in real life. I think that's weird. Regardless of your relationship to them, if you know them in real life. The closer you are, the weirder it is. Well, you to just me. told Bill, you and I do, I do want to move on from this, but yeah, um, you said there are so many people you can be friends with, blah, blah, blah. So you are potentially cutting out a lot of people that you could be friends with. I don't need new friends. No, trust I'm me. 34. I'm in the I don't need friends camp, but I'm just I'm saying you. years old. No, I understand. I'm just saying that. I'm you, always making new friends. I don't need any. But you're. But it seems like you're making new friends with the intent that maybe you can sleep with them one day. No. Okay. I'm, I, I, like nothing's very, off the table for you is what it feels like. I mean. I'm, Why should I'm things not, be off the table? I'm not making friends just to sleep with. Like, I. that's never my intention. You and Pants have never slept together. You don't know that. Yet, <laughs> you're right. I don't know that. <laughs> no, we. No, I know how you're just, into retired wrestlers. But I meet uh, people all the time. There's, you know, uh, Bill's a man about town, Mary. He's out yeah. there. He's a yeah. bon vivant. And I, and I all hang right? out with people, and so and, you know, there's always new people coming through the comedy scene that I become friends with, and there's people that I, I don't know, I just have a a very social life. So I'm yeah, not gonna. So do I. But you don't want new friends. No, what I'm saying is, from what Alan is saying, uh, I'm cutting out a lot of a lot of people that I could potentially be friends with. Like, I'm not out looking for hot new friends. Like, I since I've come to New York, I have a new group of bowling friends. I'm not sexually attracted to any of them. I'm just go play. Bowling well, they're bowlers. Why would you be? You know what I mean? But no, I have but a, there's a difference between sexually attracted and but like knowing they are attractive. You can know someone is attractive and not. Be that's attracted not, right. to them. Right. Does that make sense? And th- there's a, and nobody's and arguing that. I can think someone's attractive and be attracted to them, but still not be like, uh, all I'm the only reason I'm their friend is because someday it might happen. That's that's a wild way to look at things. I'm not saying that you do. I'm saying it's weird that you are subscribed to an OnlyFans of a close friend of yours. Oh, that is weird to me. That's how we met. Well, so there you go. Our bond. <laughs> it's a- 5.99 a month. Hey, listen, relationships have to be somewhere.
Again, he's a small business booster. Mm -hmm. If you listen to us on iHeartRadio, tell me where you do it. I'd like to know where people are. Chad listens up the road in Erie, Pennsylvania. Sasha is in Portland, Oregon. Darren's in Honolulu, speaking of Hawaii. Um, Michael is in Tucson, Arizona. Andrew is in Newark, New Jersey. And Melanie listens in Smithfield, Tennessee. We have a lot of people in the great city of Baltimore, Maryland. And you know who has a house there? Big old house. I'm not sure how he landed on Baltimore. But Kevin Spacey has a big house there in Baltimore. And he's um, in... He's worried he's going to lose it because of all of these allegations that were summarily proven false in a court of law. Uh, He was cleared by the courts in the U.K. when people um, accused him of things, and he was cleared in the United States courts against these allegations of sexual assault. Uh, And so some of his celebrity friends now have come to his defense and say, it's time to move past blackballing Kevin Spacey. I think he d- he's done like one or two movies over the past six or seven years. One of them was like an Italian movie. Basically, you're going to take whoever wants to pay you. But he hasn't worked very much otherwise, and he's had to spend all this money on uh, lawyers, and so he's concerned now that he may have to sell his home in Baltimore, uh, which he says is in foreclosure. He's been struggling to find work. And so some pretty prominent people have come to his defense. Friends who say, uh, it's time to move past all this. Liam Neeson and Sharon Stone, uh, among others, have gone on record saying that the uh, witch hunt (laughs) against uh, Kevin Spacey must end. F. Murray Abraham, the Oscar-winning actor. What do you have against Murray Abraham? They'll see me after the show, eh? No, uh, no I got things to do. <laughs> I have a question. Why is he in for, like, do these people not keep money? What do you mean? Like, he was a very successful actor for a very long time. Yeah. So he doesn't work for a couple of years and then all of his money is gone? Well, I mean, if you have multiple lawsuits, you're you're paying well, lawyers $400 true. an hour? I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. and then you also have to think, a lot of people live, you know, if he owns all these different houses, like trying to keep up with that lifestyle that you're living when you think it's just going to keep coming in is uh, really difficult to do. So Kevin Spacey, who I, you know, we talk all the time about separating the art from the artist. And before it was determined that there was no real case against Kevin Spacey, uh, it was hard to tell. But I love Kevin Spacey. I'll watch him in anything. And as it turns out, he was right when he said that it was a rush to judgment and he got swept up in the whole Me Too thing and people were coming out of the woodwork because he had always been very coy about his sexuality. Um, And all he said he wanted when these people uh, leveled these allegations against him were to, they're like, well, if we're going to do this in court, let's do it in court and figure it out. But people are saying it's time You know, there are other people who have come back, uh, who have been accused, uh, who have been found guilty of actual things. But, you know, Kevin Spacey's got a couple Oscars under his belt and uh, went through a couple of trials in the U.S. and the U.K. And so his friends are all uh, coming to his aid. But he was uh, a big deal for a while. I... One of his, you know, people think The Usual Suspects, American Beauty, those are the movies he won Oscars for. Um, He did a movie called Margin Call, and the subject matter is pretty boring, but the cast is so, it's so stacked in every role. I just love that movie. There were a couple movies like that about the financial crisis. I mean, Margin Call probably came out in 2010. There was The Big Short, which was the Ryan uh, Gosling, Steve Carell thing. That was based on a book. And then Margin Call, which was kind of like this fictionalized thing about this uh, firm dealing with the financial meltdown back in 2008. And it's such a goddamn good movie. I love it. And he's in it, and Demi Moore's in it. I mean, it's just top to bottom stacked with actors. You want to hear this one? (laughs) I do. Do I? Of course I do. Nobody does. No, I do. They were going to call it. I can't believe it's not foreclosure.
That's what margin call was going to be called? Yeah, like margarine. Margarine. <laughs> I, told you, I told you it was terrible. Oh, mar- I said it was I didn't nice. even get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I margarine did. from margin. I, listen, I, I, I knew margarine it was terrible. Margarine call. But it was just in my head. I'm like, you know oh. what? I'm going to let this rattle out of my no, stupid listen. mouth. Listen, when I'm at home and my daughter goes, why are you like this? I go, I can't help it. Mm-hmm. I have to purge these things. Yep. And then once they're out in the world, I'll take my lashes. But come on. Margarine call. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I would love to see Kevin Spacey. I, I mean, the the last movie I can remember seeing him in was Baby Driver before everything blew up. I don't yeah, know. That what, was kind of his kind of swan that, song at the time. He had, he, because he was in that one movie and they pulled him out of it and recast him with the, that oh, Mark Christopher Wahlberg Plummer. Movie. Yeah, 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 right. The, about uh, the Getty kidnapping. Kevin Spacey is uh, 64 years old. Kevin Fowler, of course, is his real name. Kevin Spacey Fowler. Um, but, yeah, I, I love him and stuff. Of course, he's the, in Seven and Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil and uh, so many great movies. So I'd love to see him come back and do some stuff. He wasn't an X-Man, was he? What am I, th- what am I thinking? He wasn't. Um, no, I'm thinking of. Uh, he was in Superman. Right. Margin call horrible bosses. Love horrible bosses. Right? He was one of the horrible bosses. Yeah, the last movie he did was called Peter 5 8, and that's that Italian movie. Oh, I think. I thought it was Italian. And that came out uh, earlier this year. Him and Rebecca De Mornay from the Muffin Stump place. So, yeah, Baby Driver and um, some other things. But who knows? Maybe uh, our uh, bureau chiefs in Baltimore know where Kevin Spacey lives. And if you do, uh, tell them that we're uh, thinking about him. Tell them we're pulling for him. David Copperfield is getting me too Did you see that? You know who David Copperfield is? Can't make these yes. allegations disappear. Bill Squire is performing tonight. High and dry. Somewhere. High eight, and dry. 8 p.m. Yep. And then uh, Tuesday, big showcase that I'm hosting for a lot of funny people in Cleveland. BillSquire.com. Mm-hmm. Just get tickets. Yep. It's all there. Yep. It's called I Can't Believe It's Not Better. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. Yeah. Uh, okay. David Copperfield uh, has uh, 16 women. Boy, when it rains, it pours. Uh, accusing him of uh, sexual misconduct. Of course, he was with, you know, back in the day, the joke was that people couldn't believe uh, that he uh, scooped up Claudia Schiffer because David Copperfield is, um, you know, he's wealthy and famous, but, uh, you know, he's got kind of a weird gold bloom quality to him. And every picture you ever saw of the dude, you know, I was a kid when there was a David Copperfield special. Event, yeah. Oh, my God. This guy's going to make the Statue of Liberty disappear. You know, they're all all these pretenders to the throne. You know, it was David Blaine. His idea of magic was I'm going to lay in a box. Okay, make some crap disappear, dude, and then you got my attention. Chris but Angel, mind freak? Mind freak. Yeah, I got high with that guy. Well, as high as he could. He's like 5'2". Um, but David Copperfield, it feels like he's in Cosby territory, uh, which ain't good. Who's uh, the dead guy? Who's like the first Who's magician? the dead guy? Harry like Houdini? Fir- Houdini. I thought David Copperfield was as old as him. No. No. Um, I remember uh, w- w- one of the Bushes called themselves David Copperfield, right? Remember in Bush yeah. 41? Seven. David Copperfield is 67 years old. His name is uh, David Kotkin. Of course, he took the name from the uh, from the book, David Copperfield. But when 16 women come out and go, yeah, I was underage, and he had me backstage, The Guardian in the U.K., did a huge story uh, after speaking with more than 100 people, including former employees, who said that David Copperfield told them to uh, pick out young women at his shows. You figure if you are, uh, I don't know that anyone would be surprised at this. Yeah. I, know, I know Mary hates magicians, but you have to figure. That's another reason why. The amount of work that goes into something like this, and if you're if you're the kid who wants to be a famous magician, like, you don't have friends 
you're a nerd from the jump. And so you finally get some fame and some fortune and you go nuts. You're like, I don't, I can't control myself. But you can do it with consent. Oh, no, no, I'm not, I'm not defending them. I'm saying in your brain, there's all these people that like become famous, but they were nerds mm -hmm. and they don't know what to do. 16 women have uh, been accused, uh, have accused him, half of whom claim they were underage. Of being cut in half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, incidents mm -hmm. occurring over four decades. So, yeah, it's got a real, whatever comes out of this, uh, it's obviously going to be a pretty protracted situation, but it sounds, uh, it's got very Cosby vibes to it. Like he, like was, he was doing that, like he was like drugging. Drugging them, them yep. Yeah. Wow. Yep. One woman were they drugged or were they under a spell? Boy, that's a really good question. I mean, they have to. I'm not even joking. Like, can he say, well, I didn't drug him. I hypnotized him. Oh, like, power <laughs> of suggestion? Or like they consented to be hypnotized. God, can you imagine if that was his Or he defense? was just doing sleight of I'm hand. I'm serious. Yeah. <laughs> Your I'm honor. Serious. Here's my one hand. Where's the other one? Like if they can. I, I mean, I know that sounds crazy, but I'm like, if he was just. Showing them very up close inside magic. Very inside. That's what I mean. <gasps> and but they signed off on it as long as if I don't know. Is that illegal? Well, also, you know, because one of the girls says that um she had sex with him when she was eighteen and believes that she was groomed. Um because he met her when she was fifteen. He gave her his phone number and a teddy bear for Valentine's Day. And then when she turned 16, he said he sent her a note that said, in two years, I will be back. <laughs> the Sperminator. Blech. She was Blech. 17 when he invited her into his limousine and pushed her head toward his crotch. This is and where, in Vegas? Where does this guy live? I don't know where he lives. Don't know. I think he lives in Florida, but I think this stuff probably it's happened. everywhere. And yeah. then they had sex sex when uh, she was 18. Of course, all of his lawyers uh, deny all of this, say that it was consensual. I was a young schoolgirl infatuated with a man who was famous, and I think he used that to benefit himself. Another woman said that Copperfield invited her and a friend backstage for a drink after one of his shows in the 90s. She was handed a glass of Sambuca that made her feel really weird and then fuzzy before blacking out. Okay, that's She good. said she woke up and Copperfield was having sex with her. So, yeah, it's all real gross. But, boy, when it rains, it pours. I mean, a story like that comes out because they've been researching it for a while. They're getting all their journalistic ducks in a row and then putting it out. And you know, you know, they have to hit you up before they print that. Mm -hmm. They go, hey, this story is going to be in The Guardian next week. Do you have any comment? And uh, obviously you call your lawyers and they say don't talk to anybody. They say there's simply no possible way that David Copperfield could have groped an audience member during a performance. He's a magician. Yeah. Uh, in 2007, he was accused of luring an ex-beauty pageant model to his private island in the Bahamas and assaulting her. So he's been... This ain't his first right, rodeo, it, right? I mean, every few years, somebody comes out and goes, yeah, I was uh, 19 years old, and he uh, put something in my drink, and... But, like, luring somebody to a private island, like, that's not. When you have the means, who's turning that down? I was going to say, do you really have to lure yeah, someone to a private lure. island? Like I mean, he's offering, and then when they get, like, I'm not saying he did or didn't do anything, but I don't, I wouldn't say he lured her there. I think he said, hey, I got a private island. You want to come hang out? Is that, a, is that luring or is that inviting? I'll pay for your flight out. David Copperfield remains the highest performer in his field with a net worth of $875 million. Good. So he's wow. 67. Yeah. They, like you said, for Cosby, well, he's going to go to jail till he's 90? Oh, I don't know if it'll get to that point, but I'm just saying the number like, of women the and the— He's probably going to pay out— Don't know. Money? $670 million. I mean, I feel like he's probably paid women out before. Well, it's every, yeah, like you said, one was in 99, one's in 2007. I mean, it's not like it's all happened in the span of two years where he was going through something. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, this is. 
Alan, I heard he referred to those 16 women as his slopper field. That's... Careful. I'm going to hypnotize myself here to get into the break. And um, You want to go see Dane Cook? I don't think he's got anything nasty on his past. Uh, Dane Cook is on the uh, Fresh New Flavor Tour. Bring him to the Akron Civic Theater later this year.